Welcome back to Building on the Rocks. This is episode four, Computational Design, where nature meets code. PR specialist Mike Newby is joined by Professor Pankaja Bagul to explore how computational design and digital tools are reshaping the future of construction. Pankaja, welcome to Building on the Rocks. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the talk. So am I, because today we're talking about computational design, and I know that that is your speciality as a not only an academic, but also as a consultant in the industry. Um, so we're going to start our conversation with a quote from mm -hmm. a master, uh, Lewis Sullivan. He said, form follows function. Mm -hmm. And thinking about that quote, do you think that needs to change uh, in the digital age? I wouldn't say it would. It needs to change. It remains form, always follows function. But it may change because uh, people are using more different materials which have got different uh, potentials, performances. So form can change as per the availability of the material or the use of the material. So as per the performance of the building, maybe the form may change mm. and still function um, very good. Okay, crazy hypothetical question for mm -hmm. you. If you could program any building to do one thing automatically, what would it be? Just I know the answer to that. Uh, I would want the, the light and ventilation to be automatically adjusted as per the changing climate outside throughout the year. And now it's possible because of all the tools. I love that. That sounds like a dream. No more arguments over the thermostat. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Thinking of the kind of digital and parametric tools of architecture today, what do you think is the most transformative aspect of that technology? The most transformative aspect is the very, the versatility in design that it offers. You can cater to a number of requirements of the client and uh, produce a number of options. And every change earlier used to take a lot of time. So architects generally were like had two or three options and then the client would make a change, it was just difficult to incorporate. But now because uh, the process, it is a process driven um, method, a parametric design is a process driven method, all are uh, relational models that we make. And one change, if you make one change at one place, it automatically gets reflected everywhere. So the change in the design, the variations in design till the end is possible and uh, it's a very efficient way of uh, designing now. So I think that is one change I appreciate a lot. Yeah, that sounds very efficient. It's, it's like that, uh, that old expression, back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. You can throw that out the window now. So I've heard, I, I mean, often I think of architects because I'm, this, I'm just this kind of guy. I think of architects as sculptors in mm -hmm. steel and glass. Uh, do you think they're becoming poets as well, co poets of code? Yes, you could say that because writing poetry and writing a good code is uh, is a skill for itself. So I think there are engineers who write a wonderful code and writing a, a prompt or writing a good algorithm is a skill that skill set that architects need to have now. And it's so when you set out a problem or you set out the uh, the brief for the client, that is writing poetry, I would say. So if you write out an algorithm which is going to be translated into design, that is the, the thing. Uh, that is what is going to make a good designer now. And the critical thing is it's still creative, is it not? It is, it is, yes. So can you give us an example of a project that was only possible because of uh, the advances of computational design? The project that comes to my mind is the Albaha Towers where um, a dynamic facade was created for, uh, for, for bringing in the change in the climatic conditions inside. So the, the skin, the dynamic facade responded to the climate outside and uh, brought in the comfort levels and adjusted the comfort level inside within the building. So that was like uh, controlling the sunlight and the heat gain within uh, on the facade and there was a corresponding change inside the building. So that's in Abu Dhabi, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the problem that that's solving is mm -hmm. quite a serious one because of the environment. Yes, it is. Uh, that was a great problem earlier because uh, we had fixed 
um, either you they had the sun shading devices and as you know everyone is on mechanical ventilation air conditioners so this is uh, it is automatically responding so there is a lot of energy saving i would say and saving on human effort and uh, yes. time yeah how are digital tools enhancing offsite and modular construction modular construction uh, I think digital tools are offering uh, various ways in which they can be assembled. So um, because you can write a program or a code, how they can be assembled and then uh, in which pattern and uh, the robotic construction will allow you to pick and place it in any place you want. So you can have a number of variations for the same, uh, amount, for the same size of panels. And uh, that is the one thing that is the innovation that's happening. So earlier we had all panels in one line or something, but now you can change the geometry, you can change the variables and then find out what looks best and what are the better options available. That's interesting. It sounds like computational design is driving some changes in efficiency and also yes. aesthetics. Yes, aesthetics, yes. Can you think of any standout examples? I would say um, aesthetics, uh, curvilinearity is one that people are exploring. People are going back to uh, organic design, the, like designing in nature. And um, there is one, uh, Jean Noel has designed one Louvre Museum, mm. and that has got a sun shading roof, which turns automatically to uh, let the light in. So that is one advanced kind of a design, I would say. So it brings in the filtering light. So I'd imagine in this new digital world, mm -hmm material performance is more in focus. Do, mm -hmm. you, do you expect uh, things like stone wall to be, pick up in terms of how widely it's used as a result? Yes, obviously, because of its properties, it's got the duality of the, it can have steel as its uh, cover, or you can have, uh, it has got, um, maybe you can have the surface in a different material and stone wall inside. So it's mainly used for insulation and uh, its fire resisting properties are a lot. So in terms of performance, it's a very uh, high yielding kind of uh, a material. So it's got a lot of potential and people are going in for lighter buildings. So sound insulation is also one of the important properties which uh, Stonewall gives. So that raises a question. Mm -hmm. uh, we've talked about how computational design affects the efficiency of the construction phase, mm -hmm. but the ongoing efficiency can, can it make buildings more energy efficient? Can it make them safer? Can it make them just more livable? Yes, like I said earlier, that uh, it is possible and it's happening. And um, I believe that because of the building information modeling, which is uh, happening parallel to the design. So as you design, you are giving in inputs for the materials, the material choices you're going to have, and you're checking for all the inputs. So if you're looking for safety, if you're looking for the audits that you need to do for the green building, all are happening parallelly as you are designing. So it's like a process, an integrated process. And this is the most exciting part, and I'm sure all will be taken care of. Well, I'm a, I'm, you've converted me. You've completely convinced <laughs> me. So let me put a statement to you and just yes. see if you agree with me. Computation mm -hmm. equals less waste, more mm -hmm. flexibility. I agree with you. Yes, it is, uh, surely, because... Everything is finalized on the board. So with tools that make you more efficient, sometimes mm -hmm. there's a risk that they can make you cut corners. And I know mm -hmm. people are feeling trepidation about AI for mm -hmm. that reason. As, as code takes center stage with design, what, what are your hopes and, and what are your warnings? Mm. Yes, that's very true. In a positive sense, it's great. However, uh, people will tend to, for, I'm, I'm concerned is that people will forget that it is a tool and they might over rely on it. And that would be, that would create a lot of problems because uh, as a designer, you are catering to the needs of the, of the client, of the human being and the performance of the building or creating environments for people to be comfortable in. And it should function as it has been. However, the AI, using AI and coding, people may just build structures that may not be that comfortable or they may alienate human beings from the design itself. So as long as it's going to be used as a tool 
And I would say as a partner in design, it would be very good. And I suppose design is a joyful and creative experience. And yes. we want to make the job easier, but we don't want to remove that. Yes, we don't want to do it. So creativity is the one thing that is driving everything. One question that people might have is, can code-driven buildings be human and how? Sure, because uh, it is upon the architect who is designing, and most designers are now taking decisions. As we discussed, um, uh, that sustainability is one thing that everyone is very conscious about. Building with nature, as I told you earlier, that uh, nature is, uh, everyone is taking inspiration from nature, and uh, nature is uh, human, it caters to the human needs, and the scale is also human. So. The scale is the most important thing where people feel alienated and the comfort level. So the performance of the building, if it is comfortable, then uh, people feel at home. So these can be controlled by the computer and the information that we are giving in. So I think uh, it is perfectly possible for us to have that aesthetics of the human scale as well as the performance and the comfort levels within the building. Because ultimately, it's driven by code, but there's an architect, a human architect, making yes, decisions. Yes, just making the decisions, along with the client, I would say, yes. And Katja, thank you so much. We're getting towards the end, so I've got a quick fire round of questions for you, if you're ready. Yes, I'm really excited to know what it would be. Okay, here we go. Strap in. One tool you can't live without as a designer. My digital notepad good that it's digital. Uh, your wildest prediction for digital construction in 10 years? It would be seamless construction from, from, the, bow, uh, from the computer to the site. Okay, so what's the best use of Stonewall in a computational project? I would say it would be for fire resistance and insulation. Thank you so much. Now, going back to that quote at the beginning mm -hmm. from uh, Lewis Sullivan, form follows function. After our conversation, do you think maybe we need to update that? Yes, I think I would do it now. Form follows innovation would be the update. That's very nice. <laughs> Thanks, Pankaja. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was fun being here. Yeah. You've been listening to Building on the Rocks, brought to you by Rockwell Core Solutions. Don't forget to follow us for more conversations on where design and innovation meet.